Hey, welcome back. This is Tammy and I do math for coffee. And today we are reviewing topics that may show up on a first semester geometry final exam. I picked 20 topics and you can jump around using the timestamps that are down in the description. And I put the topic in each timestamp, but we're going to go through these in order and we are starting right now. For this one, this is the segment addition postulate. And you're supposed to find the length of segment PQ. And you have this diagram. And what we know is that the length of P to R is 19 long. So that means what you'll do is you add 2x minus 2 to 2x minus 7 and set up an equation set it equal to 19. Now we solve. That you're going to do some combining of like terms. The two x's are going to go together and the two constants are going to go together. Add 9 to both sides and we end up with 4x equals 28. Divide both sides by 4 and x equals 7. And if this is a multiple choice question you're looking at, something like this, that will be one of the choices, but it will be wrong. And the reason is, is because they wanted you to find the length of pq. So you need to substitute that back in. 2 times 7 minus 2, that will be the length of PQ, so that's going to be 14 minus 2, so PQ is 12. This problem is about angle addition postulate. So the given information is that angle ARQ is x plus 45 and angle SRA is x plus 86 and the entire thing which is angle SRQ is 109. So when you add those two little angles together you are going to set that equal to 109. Okay watch go through the algebra here real quick. All right, so now we know that x equals negative 11. Now, does that make any sense? Well, it might because we're not solving for an angle here. We're just solving for x. Substitute the negative 11 in for x in both of the smaller angles and see what we get. There it is. 75 and 34 is 109. We were supposed to get that. The negative 11 for x works. This is kind of a vocabulary question because we want to check and see if you know what these words mean. Complementary, linear pair, vertical, or adjacent. Here we have two angles a and b that are right next to each other and on the other side of them you see a right angle. Well that's 90 degrees. That means that angle a and b together must also add up to 90 degrees. So these two are complementary. Now if they were a linear pair, they would add up to 180. And if they were vertical, they would be across from each other and they would be equal in size. Adjacent means they're just sitting right next to each other. And it is true that A and B are adjacent. They are right next to each other. But the better answer is complementary. This question is testing to see if you understand central angles or that an entire circle has a degree measure of 360 degrees. We can set this up. 227 plus the missing angle B plus 69 equals 360. Combining like terms, we end up with B plus 296 equals 360. Subtract 296 from both sides, so B must be 64 degrees. This question is about complementary angles or even just angle addition postulate again because that little red square means they add up to 90 degrees. So 3x plus 2 plus the 40 equals 90. And then we're going to solve the algebra and we end up with x equals 16. And to check your answer, put 16 in for x where 3x plus 2 is and see if that all works out. And it adds up to 50 and so 50 plus 40 equals 90. PW is an angle bisector. That angle bisectors split angles exactly in half. You end up with two smaller angles that are equal in size. So find x if the measure of angle 1 is 17x and the measure of angle 2 is 18x minus 1. Well even though those algebra expressions are different we know that the size of these angles has to be the same. So 17x equals 18x minus 1. We subtract 18x from both sides and we end up with negative 1x equals negative 1. Dividing both sides by negative 1, we end up with x equals 1. I'll leave you to do the check. This question is about vocabulary around the idea of two parallel lines in a transversal. So they're asking you what is x and y. Well x and y in this diagram, they're not the same size. And they're also on the same side and they're also in between. So they are clearly same side interior. Same type of problem but now you're going to be doing a little bit of math. Find the value of x that makes lines u and v parallel. Well in order for these two lines to be parallel, these two are supposed to be supplementary. They're going to add up to 180. So x plus 15 plus 70 equals 180. Now instead of combining like terms here, 
I wanted to do it a little differently to show you that doing it a little differently will also work. So I subtracted 70 from both sides right away, partly because it's easier to do with mental math. 180 minus 70 is 110. So now I have 100, x plus 115 equals 110. Subtract the 115 and I get x equal to negative 5. I'm always a little nervous about getting negative answers in geometry, so let's check that one. We know if you add negative 5 to 115, you get 110. Now that 110 plus the 70 that's down below it. Yes, that does add up to 180. Now we have to do the same thing again. We're going to find the value of x that makes the two lines parallel, but now we have a different pair, 9x minus 4 and 7x plus 18. Those are called alternate exterior angles. Even if you forget the name of the pairs, if you remember the math relationships, you'll be fine with a problem like this. So we know that those two are going to be equal to each other. Almost all these angle pairs are equal except for the same side interior, alternate exterior angles are congruent. 9x minus 4 equals 7x plus 18. Subtract 7x from both sides, we get 2x minus 4 equals 18. Add the 4, 2x equals 22, x equals 11. Let's do a quick check to make sure that's going to work out. That angle is 95, and this angle is 95. Yay us! Classify each triangle by its angles and sides. All three sides are different lengths. That means that this is a scalene. Again, this is a vocabulary problem. If you look at the multiple choice, scalene is a pretty safe option. So we know it's scalene. Now we just need to figure out what it is based on the angles. All the angles inside this triangle are less than 90 degrees. That makes it an acute scalene. The answer is B. This the problem uses the triangle sum theorem, which says that all three angles inside of a triangle have to add up to 180 degrees. So that's what I'm going to do. x plus 87 plus 31 equals 180. Combining those numbers, I get x plus 118 equals 180. I subtract that from both sides, and I get x equals 62 degrees. This problem uses the exterior angle theorem. Now, this is the fastest way to do it, but there's more than one way to do this problem. The exterior angle theorem says that the the two angles that are farthest away, when you add them together, are going to equal the angle that's on the outside. So 61 plus 30 equals 91, and 91 is the correct answer. There's also a couple ways to do this particular problem, but the way I saw it was I saw two congruent triangles. That means that the 7 and the 2x plus 25 are actually equal to each other. So doing the algebra here, I end up with negative 18 equals 2x, so x equals negative 9. We have a couple of things going on here. We have two isosceles triangles sitting next to each other, but they also make a 90 degree angle up there in the corner. But the only number they gave us is this 50 degree angle that's over on the outside. And we are supposed to find x, and x has something to do with angle 2. So the measure of angle 2 is x plus 114. I can't even use that right away. I mean, I really need to dig in here and start to figure out what all these angles are. And you have to start with the 50 degrees. The angle across from the 50 degrees is a vertical angle. Those are the same size, so that's also 50 degrees. Now, if you look at this triangle, it is an isosceles triangle. Base angles in isosceles triangles are congruent. So if I know that one of them is 50, the other one must be 50. Okay, so now I'm over here where the right angle is, and I know that part of it is 50 degrees, so the other part of it has to be 40 degrees because they have to add up to 90. Now we're looking at the isosceles triangle that's here on the side. So if that's 40, then this one down here on the bottom is also 40. Well, those two add up to be 80. And since a triangle has to add up to 180 degrees total, that means that angle 2 as an actual angle measurement has to be 100 degrees. 100 plus 40 plus 40 is 180. Okay, now we're cooking. So the 100 has to equal x plus 114 because they told us that angle 2 equals x plus 114. Let's do some algebra. Subtract 114 from both sides. We end up with x equals negative 14. I'll leave you to do the check if you want to. This is one of my favorite topics, and that is using the converse of the Pythagorean theorem. We know that the Pythagorean theorem, c squared equals a squared plus b squared, is to help you find sides in a right triangle. But what the converse is telling us, that if you find c squared, a squared, and b squared, you can also figure out if it's a right triangle, or an acute triangle, or an obtuse triangle. 
If c squared comes out to be less than a squared plus b squared, it is an acute triangle. If c squared comes out to be greater than a squared plus b squared, you have an obtuse triangle. The trick here is you have to figure out which side is longest because that's going to be your c. Grab the calculator and I checked that the square root of 7 is about 2.6. So if that side's about 2.6, the other side is 3. 4 is actually the c. So c squared is going to be 4 squared and a squared plus b squared is going to be the square root of 7 squared plus 3 squared. Well, 4 squared is 16, and root 7 squared is just 7, 3 squared is 9, and what we end up with is 16 equals 16. Because they're equal, we know that this is a right triangle. Let's get into some congruent triangles. If you need some practice with proofs and congruent triangles, check out the link above and I'll put it in the description too. State if the two triangles are congruent. If they are, state how you know. Well, the how you know is the theorem. Well, these two angles are congruent to each other, so we have an angle. The other two angles are congruent to each other, so there's another angle. So we know we're going to be using two A's for sure. It's going to knock out A and B. Between the two congruent angles, these two triangles are sharing a side. So it is really angle side angle, which is none of these. Congruent triangles again, but in a different way. State what additional information is required in order to know that the triangles are congruent for the reason given. The reason is side angle side. I look at the triangles as given to me and I see that I have an angle that's congruent and a side that's congruent and I know that they want side angle side, so it has to be in that order. The A, the angle, has to be between the congruent sides. Side LM has to be congruent to side UT if side angle side is going to be true. We go look at our choices, and it is D. LM is congruent to UT. We have a quadrilateral here. One of the things we know is that the sum of all the angles in a four-sided figure has to equal 360 degrees. It's very similar to what we know about triangles where all the angles have to add up to 180. So to make my job a little easier, I'm going to add 64 and 108. That comes out to be 172. And I know that 15x and 22x is 37x. 5 minus 2 is 3. So I have 37x plus 3 plus 172 has to add up to 360. I only did that that way just to save some space. You could write them all out and then start combining like terms. There's nothing wrong with that. Putting together the 3 and the 172, we get 37x plus 175 equals 360. Subtract 175 from both sides. 37x equals 185. We have to divide that by 37. Let me grab a calculator. And the answer x equals 5. Now, they didn't ask us to solve for x. This is one of those questions you'll need to be careful about because after all that work, you just want to be done. But they actually asked us to find the measure of angle v, and v is 22x minus 2. So I got to substitute in that 5, do a little math, and we get 108 degrees. Find the measurement indicated in each parallelogram. This one feels like it's the same, but it feel, also feels like they didn't give you enough information. So there's something you're supposed to know about parallelograms. These behave a little nicer than just regular four-sided figures. In a parallelogram, if you add any two consecutive angles, they have to add up to 180 because the whole thing's going to be 360. So I'm going to add these two together, the 5x plus 3 and the 18x minus 7, and I get 23x minus 4 equals 180. 23x then equals 184. We divide by 23 and we get x equals 8. And like the last problem, x is not what they were looking for. You have to find it, but you have to go a little farther because they want to know the measure of angle J. So we're going to substitute that 8 into 18x minus 7 and we get 137 degrees. Again we're working with parallelograms and in parallelograms the diagonals actually bisect each other. They won't be the same length because one's going to be longer and one might be shorter, but cut each other in half. So we're told that DG equals 24 and that GB equals 2X plus 24. And when we mark this up, we know that DG and GB are actually equal to each other. So 2X plus 24 equals 24. You subtract 24 from both sides, you get 2X equals 0. 
So x must equal zero. It can happen. It's tricky and it's going to make you second guess yourself, but all the math is correct. So that is the correct answer. To review some more for Geometry Final, click into this playlist next.